Hi JJ, good to see you. Hey Kamzi, uh, great to see you. We wanted to make a short video for the Second Life Basics series to demonstrate how voice chat works in Second Life. And then I thought what a great opportunity to learn a little about you and the University of Western Australia in Second Life. So I'm going to be asking you a few questions if that's okay. Sure, no problem. Oh great, well let's start with your role. You hold a pivotal role at UWA in Second Life. How would you describe it? Um, well, I'd describe my role as the coordinator um, at um, UWA um, in terms of um, the overall activities that happen on the campus. Mm -hmm. So we have activities ranging from film and machinima to um, teaching um, and recently um, been supporting the School of Law as well in um, creating video um, you know, within Second Life oh, to be used um, to explain concepts of law um, to uh, first and second year law students at the university. Oh, that's great. That sounds really exciting. And how did the university decide it wanted a virtual presence? It's a pretty brave move. Was it a planned strategy? Um, well, it started out... Um, Myself, um, thinking that it would be really great for the UWA campus to be up on the web somehow so that anyone anywhere in the world could visit the campus and wander through the campus mm -hmm. um, if they didn't have the opportunity to come here. We partnered with Google Earth to build your campus in 3D competition, uh, which we won oh, wow. for Australasia um, across universities in Australia and New Zealand. And that led us to getting some um, publicity and um, and notice and, and funding um, to then in the next year, um, 2008, come into Second Life, um, buy a sim and um, create um, Winthrop uh, Clock Tower, which you see um, you know, in this space. Um, and that's how we started. Ah, well, it's undeniably a beautiful campus and it must be beautiful in real life as well. So can you tell us some of the ways you've mentioned law, but are there other ways that it's been used for virtual education? Yeah, in the School of Business um, have run a number of second year units and masters by coursework units using Second Life. Ah. And we've had uh, Professor Wade Halverson, um, whose teaching methods have won numerous um, awards um, using it. He's built case studies and things like that for students to go through. Um, Looking at how um, marketing and uh, marketing and similar um, techniques are used with emerging technologies, uh, we've had collaborations with um, other universities where our students um, worked on a project simultaneously with um, students from another university. For example, there's a business um, school in Switzerland who worked with our um, students. Um, the School of Education at UWA has used it, as well as the School of Anatomy and Human Biology. Uh, we ran um, a challenge uh, recently where people were asked to create um, uh, 3D objects and, and implements that could be used to teach concepts relating to anatomy and human biology. Oh, wow. So regardless of the form it takes, education is really all about the students. So what's been the students' feedback about studying in Second Life? Uh, feedback um, was that it, it's been a really interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Some of uh, Professor Wade Halverson's work has indicated um, students who are particularly from you know, backgrounds where they are more reticent and, um, and they don't speak up too much in class and tutorials yeah. find a new voice um, when they use their avatars to speak and communicate and they speak uh, or they seem to speak on a much more even keel with their professors uh, when they're speaking um, through virtual, you know, through, through their avatars. Um, uh, Gee, that's interesting. As opposed to when they're speaking to professors in real life. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. That's an unexpected outcome, I think, too. So, that's right. my guess is that it can't all be smooth sailing. Can you explain the main challenges for virtual teachers? Um, the main challenges uh, for most universities um, is that there's very little central support. Um, and um, it, it is 
has been and you know and uh, and still is now um, quite misunderstood. Um, you know, I mean, like uh, using the word uh, game and things like that is, is wrong for virtual worlds. Um, and people aren't able to fathom. People who have not had any experience of virtual worlds have no understanding of how it can help um, individuals. Yeah. Um, so um, you have numerous. I mean, like there's an Australian virtual worlds working group, you know, made up of individuals from across 40, 50 um, university and tertiary institutions in Australia and oh, New Zealand. Okay. But in every case, it's always a number of academics who are working in isolation on their own in the university. And, um, and you know, that's probably the greatest challenge, gaining legitimacy yeah. in the eyes of your own university colleagues within, within your own university. Uh, um, that's a reputation thing. Yeah. And what about, is there a hurdle there in terms of getting students up to speed with walk, talk, move, whatever? Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, whenever anyone has a class in a virtual world, it's extremely important to have a full, proper tutorial on, um, on using the virtual world, um, because it's not, um, it is not, you, need to you know, put it's some effort into learning how to operate within virtual worlds um, if you want to operate within it successfully. And a mistake many academic um, staff make is um, they, I mean, like, there's limited time already within a semester, the number of hours, number of contact hours you have. Yeah. So uh, the academic staff is trying to you know, put as much research and teaching content into all of those weeks. and. Um, sometimes missing out the very important first or second lesson where you need to really dedicate an hour or two hours in fact to helping your students get up to speed and comfortable using virtual worlds and that's sometimes not done yeah well hopefully the second life basic series will help with that that's right now I, i'm sure that that will be um, a great um, help to any um, you know, lecturer or any university thinking of operating in virtual worlds yeah so along with innovative education, UWA has a reputation in Second Life as a patron of the arts. Why is that? Um, it started with uh, Professor Ted Snell, who is chairman of the Visual Arts Council for Australia uh, and who's also the director of the Cultural Precinct at UWA, approaching us and um, providing some funding to, you know, quote unquote, do something for arts. and. Um, that led to you know the very first um, art challenges at UWA, which was the first of its kind. We had a year-long um, art competition with um, you know with broken up into results every month being provided, and the monthly winners are moving into a grand finale round. Um, so that's a lot of work, JJ. That, that <laughs> Yeah, I mean, some of the things uh, we, we did there, looking back, is, is crazy almost um, to try to attempt, you know, for, um, for a group um, who don't have any experience with art in virtual worlds. But, you know, we were very lucky. I was very lucky um, that the right people came at the right time, quadrupotling, freewheeling, taroling, um, you know, who helped with various aspects of, um, of, of running of that nature and um, it was a success and uh, we became you know more well known and accepted within the art and film worlds. Yeah you definitely have a very strong reputation in that area and JJ I'm amazed at how active UWA is in, its, in Second Life it's really exciting and it seems that there's perhaps even more possibilities so on that note just one last question what do you see in the future for UWA in Second Life and for virtual education overall? It's um, really hard to say. Um, um, virtual education um, could expand um, further depending on technology. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of hoping that um, you know, we will be able to be completely immersed um, you know, even far beyond uh, what's offered by things like the Oculus Rift, where you know perhaps a whole room could be uh, virtualized um, or 
or something like that. Yeah. Um, and but but it is really hard to um, to predict um, where it could go. None of what has happened over the last four or five years in UWA I could have predicted at the start. So yes. Um, what what's up for UWA is to see where the opportunities um, lie and um, if something falls from the sky um, onto us to take the opportunity and run with it. That, that's about it, JJ, I think. Um, it's been really good to hear about UWA's virtual presence and it seems that there could well be more on the horizon depending on how things go. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Thanks so much for your time, JJ. That's right. Thank you very much.